Have you ever wondered why some websites rank much higher than others on a search engine? If I go on Google and I type in the name of my website, how do I get my website to stand out above the rest? This could be on Google, this could be on Bing, this could be on Yahoo, any search engine. I can't really think of any other off the top of my head. So what we're going to use is SEO, which stands for Search Engine Optimization. And there's, as a developer, there's a few tools and tricks that we can use to push ourselves up to be noticed by these robots that sort of scrape our website and show what to display to people who search. So let's jump right into it. So as we discussed in the first video, I think it was, that I ever made on Next.js, all the new components in Next.js 13 are loaded on the server side first. And this is great for SEO, because if you were to load it on the client side, if I just go down here, then basically the HTML loads, and then there's a script for JavaScript. So the page will load, and then the JavaScript will slowly hydrate on the page as it comes and loads one by one through the script. But what would be better is if this is all loaded and then put into the HTML. So when the robots that Google or any of the other websites use to scrape our websites, they see absolutely everything we want to give them. So this could be the meta tags, the, the headers, the, if you know basic HTML, it's the H1 to H6 tags are very good for SEO and also anchor tags, which link between elements. So we want all of these to be hydrated on the page before the robot scrape through. So this is where static site generation and server side rendering are key. So if we go a little bit more in depth, the static site generation is where your HTML is generated at build time. If you create a new Next.js app, you'll be given four commands to run. One of them is dev, which just spins up the development environment. One of them is build, which is exactly this here, the build time. Uh, one of them is start, which is your runtime. And one of them is test, I believe, or lint. That's just pure development stuff. So when we're describing build time here, it is that building process. So when you run next build, the static site, static pages that you've created are actually generated, like full HTML. All the JavaScript that you put in there is hydrated into this. So as you can see here, it says static site generation is probably the best type of rendering strategy for SEO, as not only do you have all the HTML because it's pre-rendered, but it also helps with page performance. So, which is also another ranking factor when it comes to SEO. Server-side rendering is also pre-rendered, so similar to the above static site generation, it is very good for SEO. But instead of it being generated at build time, it is being generated at request time. But all you have to know is that both are great for SEO. Another thing is incremental static regeneration. So if you had a whole bunch of blog pages that were statically generated, say you had blog post one, blog post two, blog post three, when you built the app, and then when you launched it, you posted another blog post. So you created blog post number four. Incremental static regeneration basically puts a timer on your website that says, say every 60 seconds or every two minutes, one hour, whatever it is, revalidate, sort of update the static pages that we built before. So this is great for SEO still, but that leaves us with the worst of the worst, which is client-side rendering. Not to say that client-side rendering doesn't have a space in the world at all. This is the typical way that we used to render pages before at Next.js. And it basically loads the single HTML file with no content and then slowly fetch the JavaScript one by one in order of the scripts like a typical website used to be. It says down here that it's perfect for heavy data, heavy dashboards, account pages, or pages that you don't require to be in any search engine index. But if you do want something to be indexed and you have something that has like a loader and it fetches information that takes 10 seconds, 20 seconds, it will not be indexed and your page will look very empty to the robots or there will just be chunks of it missing. One interesting thing to note is that the URL structure also does matter for SEO. So rather than having a website that had website.com slash UID slash and then an actual UID, so like one, two, three, H, 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 whatever letters, it would be better to have slash user slash nick. So using some sort of username instead of a UID in the actual URL would be a lot better for SEO. And the example they used here is slash learn slash basic slash create next JS app is better than learn course one lesson one. So rather than just using numbered or some sort of ID, it's better to give these slugs an actual name. So as I mentioned just now, if I was to build a social media app today, I would be using usernames instead of UIDs. And we do see that a lot, like Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, every single website that I can think of uses slash username rather than slash 
and then revealing your UID. I'm just gonna speed through this as the final page before we jump into the code. There are a few things that are very important to metadata. The most important is the title. And what this is, is up here, if you look at the tab, this is metadata, rendering and ranking, learn next year. So all of that will be inside the title. I'll show you how it works in code in a bit. Um, the second most important is the description. So if I was to go on Google right now and search my page, it would say the title and then the description underneath it. There's another thing called Open Graph Protocol, which is basically a standard that was created by Facebook. You don't have to know too much about it. All you know is just throw some things at it and you'll be good to go. I'll show you how to write it in the code in a bit. Just basically a bunch of tags you need to include in your website for optimum SEO. There's also Twitter tags. I'm not sure if they're going to be on this website, but I will show you in the code. So let's jump right into that. So in Next.js 13, the easiest way to do your metadata goodness is to, on every single page you have, export a constant called metadata. And I've created a helper function here called generate metadata. So if you can see, this is a website I've made called Goose. And it's a project I'm currently working on. And on the home page, it just says title is Goose. And this is the description. On the contact page, it's Goose. Uh, line contact and under the about page goose line about and if we go into the generate metadata there's a whole bunch of stuff here these are the two parameters i'm passing in the title and the description and i've also given them default so for example in my layout i'm calling generate metadata without any parameters so they are both optional so the title will default to goose which is the name of my app and description which is eat share honk which is our slogan and within here this is what you want to return. Some big object with things like metadata base, robots. Here's the title and description that we went through. The open graph protocol that I mentioned that Facebook uses and the Twitter one as well. And without going into too much detail, basically the robots will just scrape and look for certain things like titles, um, descriptions, and even the URL images that you can pass in. So I've just put in our logo. And this little tag here will basically tell robots they can read this page. Metadata base is something that is required by Next.js as well. It's just basically your URL or metadata. So I'm passing in the actual website. So if we actually go to the website, you'll see that title that I mentioned earlier, Goose. And then if I went to the about page, Goose with that line about, Goose contact. So that's the titles. And if we go into the elements, you can inspect the head element, which is where all the metadata lives. You'll see the title tag, you'll see the description tag, and a whole bunch of other things. Like All these are the open graph tags that I mentioned earlier, the Facebook ones, and all the Twitter tags. And also this tag here that allows the robots to read your page. If I go between the pages, you should see these changing. Now we're on a goose, the about changes, same with the home page the descriptions and titles change. And just to wrap things up, we have something called robots.ts that is in the root of your app. And this is basically the instructions for good robots. There are good and bad robots. Bad robots will just read your page no matter what and scrape your data. But the good robots will read this file first and then say, can I read these pages? And right now, by putting allow slash, I'm just allowing them to read the entire website. We could disallow certain pages, like if there was a private one, if there was a admin page or something, you wouldn't want the robots to read through that. And optionally, you can pass an entire sitemap object, which is basically all the URLs generated on your page. You don't really need to do this unless your app is massive, which mine currently isn't, which is why I have this commented out. Um, but if your app grows to hundreds of pages, I recommend looking into a sitemap. All right, I'm gonna wrap things up there. I hope you learned a lot about SEO, at least the basics of it. I know there's tons of information out there, but as a developer, the minimum things you should do are at least put your title, your descriptions, your open graph protocol, get that stuff out of the way. Just allow robots, allow robots, whatnot. I'm gonna put a helper function that I used in the code that I'm using on my app, Goose, in the description below. So feel free to just copy that and you should be good to go for at least your basic SEO needs. As usual, hit that like button if you want. Um, please keep commenting like this. It really helps me decide what I'm gonna work on next. So as you can see here, I'm gonna work on layouts.
and then I'm going to check out images in next. Who knows what's next after that? Comment down below.